Hey, how y'all doing out there? I'm back with you with another video. Today I want to talk about the Samsung Galaxy Fold in 2021. Now, of course, this phone was released in 2019. And I got to say, I was really impressed with Samsung um, when they, you know, brought this device out. Now, it was their first attempt at a foldable device. And I have to admit, they did a great job. Now, initially, when they released it to reviewers, there was some screen issues and, you know, you know, things getting a little messed up here and there. So they re took, they recalled all of them back. They made an adjustment to the screen because people were peeling off the top layer of the screen when they wasn't supposed to, thinking that it was a screen protector or whatever. So they sealed it in, did a better job of sealing it in from dust and debris and things like that. Then they sent it back out, then they didn't have any more issues. Now, of course, this phone, with some people, they had issues with how small the front of the display is <clears throat> and then with the notch on the inside of the display. Now, those are valid points depending on who you are and, you know, and what you like and what you don't like. Everybody has their own opinion. Everybody feels the way they feel about certain things. Now, do I have, do, did I have a major problem with these things? No, not really. Maybe so, maybe more so the notch. But there was a way where you could get rid of the notch, you know, with their software. But then when they put out Android 11, they took away that ability, which I don't know why Samsung did that. But there is another way you can get rid of it. Uh, but, but you can't get rid of it on the home screen unless you're using a black wallpaper. But anyway, we'll get into that later. But now, is this phone still relevant? Should you pick it up? Should you consider it? I would say depending on the price, because when this phone was released, it was $2,000 plus tax. That was the most expensive phone that I've ever, ever heard of. <laughs> and that price was ridiculous. Now, I understand Samsung was being innovative. You know, they was putting out some new stuff. They make great quality, um, you know, devices. But that that's ridiculous. $2,000. No way. Nobody should spend two grand on a device. I don't care who you are. You should not do that. That's insane. Okay. Now, I got the phone, uh, I think it was in 2019, and I just got it just to review it. But, you know, I didn't keep it. I sent it back because I wasn't paying $2,000 for no device. But <clears throat> if you could get this for under $700 or just a little over $700, I will say go get it because it's still going to be relevant. It's still going to get Android 12. Okay. Still going to get security patches for the next couple of years. And the phone is built extremely well. Okay. It's not as fragile as people, you know, were saying that it was. Now, I'm not saying you should do whatever you want to do with the screen. No, you don't want any sharp objects and things like that, you know, inside the display. You got to be careful with that. and You don't want to drop it. But it's not super fragile. <laughs> it's not. It's it's really gr made with. I mean, it feels really good in the hand. Very very premium feeling. You know this um, mechanism right here that holds everything together is extremely. You know, built very very well, and it has some nice good weight to it. it it's not like it doesn't feel like a toy. Okay, it really don't. This is Samsung did a great job with this device. Now, when you think about it, build quality, you got glass on the front, glass on the back, you got an aluminum frame, and you got one of my favorite things on any phone is the always-on display. I absolutely love, excuse me, the always-on display. Love it because you get to see the time, the date, the battery percentage, and you get to see your notifications. I love that. And also, it's fully functional. So say if you tap on that, you could right there, you can control the brightness of the always on display. And then when you get into the lock screen, you double tap twice. It brings up these other widgets where you can see if I was playing music, um, today's schedule, my alarm, my weather and Bixby routines and my daily. I mean, my digital well-being. And all you got to do, say, if I want to check out the weather, just tap it, press the fingerprint sensor. It's going to bring me the weather as soon as I open it up. See, right to the weather. 
So I like that. So the always on display has always been one of the things I love about, you know, Samsung devices. And they make the best always on display on the market. Now, this phone does have face unlock. Now, the face unlock can be pretty good. It's kind of iffy. It goes in and out. Sometimes it's really quick. Sometimes it's not. But it's not terrible. It's not it's not too bad, but it's not as accurate as I would like. And Samsung has never did the best job with the face unlock. It's just sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. So it's kind of iffy, but it's, you know, it's all right. It's nice that it has one as opposed to some um, companies that don't have face unlock. So I do like face unlock. Of course, you got the side mounted fingerprint sensor. That works um, extremely fast if you, you know, can find it, you know, nail it. The first time the thing that irritates me about that a little bit is that sometime when i'm trying to press it i feel like i don't really nail it and then i'm messing around trying to get it i w it would have been nice if they had put an in display an optical in display fingerprint sensor on the front of this device like right here at the bottom or something that would have been really cool or even down here in this space down here it would have been really nice if they had done that especially you know for that price you know when it was released two thousand dollars so, but the side mount the fingerprint sensor is super fast. If you nail it, let me see if I can nail it the first time. Yeah, it's pretty fast. Okay. Now I know there's some people that don't like how small this display is 4.6 super AMOLED display, but it doesn't really bother me. Honestly, I can see everything very well. Um, I got every, I got my apps in folders. So if I open it up, it's already in a folder. So it's not a big deal. You can access everything and use it like you would normally use the inside display. Uh, the only things that's important to me is what's in these folders. I got my Bible apps in here. And I got my regular uh, mostly used apps in here. And then, of course, I got my messages, my camera, and my phone. So I'm good. This doesn't really bother me. Now, of course, the, um, the, ga the, um, the Fold 2, the Z Fold 2, you know, it's all display from top to bottom, and it's a little wider. So I know people would rather have that, but this size never really bothered me, honestly, but everybody's different, you know, to each his own. But when you open it up, this is where really all the goodness is. <laughs> this is where all the goodness is. Now, with the inside display, you got a, um, a 7.3 inch dynamic AMOLED Infinity Flex display with HDR10+. And I'm telling you right now, everybody knows this. That, that use Samsung products, they make the best displays on the market. I mean, this display is absolutely beautiful. And I absolutely love it. <laughs> you get 12 gigs of RAM, which is a lot of RAM, same amount of RAM that you get in the Note 10 Plus. A 512 gigs of internal memory. Now, think about this, y'all. Now, listen to me closely. 512 gigabytes of internal storage. Now, keep in mind, the, the Fold 2... The Fold 2, 256 gigs, and they charge the same price as they did for this. I don't understand that there's no expandable memory on this device. There's no expandable memory on the Fold 2, but they reduced the ex their, um, external um, internal memory by half. Why in God's name would you do that? You're going to charge the same amount of money, but you're going to take away 256 gigs? I don't get that. So I prefer this one because I'm the type of person I need a lot of storage. And it and the fact is you're not going to give me expandable memory. So at least with 512 gigs, I'm good with that. I can live with that. That's plenty of space for me to do what I want, store my movies and music, photos, all of that stuff. But with the Fold 2, you still charge the same amount of money, but you give me less storage and you still don't give me expandable storage. I don't. I, that makes no sense and i don't know why anybody would want that just because it was built a little bit better the front screen is a little bit bigger and think about this also with this device you got akg earbuds in the box and you got a case with the z fold 2 you got no earbuds you got no case and you got you got less storage and they charge you the same amount of money as they did this one now y'all tell me if that makes sense for me, it's about value, and you're not getting a lot of value with the Fold 2. You're just not, in my opinion. All right, now, battery life on here is good, 4,380 milliamp battery. I usually average around, I usually can get about a day and a half. Now, I did, um, I was, 
messing around with the um with my battery. Yes, let me show you what I got yesterday. All right, now check this out. See that up there? A day and 11 hours. Look at that screen on time. Seven hours and 20 minutes. Okay? So the battery life on here is a beast. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about the battery life on this. And that's what, that was with heavy usage. Okay? Over seven hours of screen on time. A day and almost 12 hours. So that's a day and a half. Depending on how you use it now. Now, you get 15 watt fast wire charging which is really not fast it takes almost two hours to fully charge this which is a disappointment because it should have had at least 25 watt uh super fast charging mainly based on the price okay 15 watt wire charging is really slow but if you're going to be charging this overnight it's not the biggest deal but it's not that type of phone that you could top off quickly if you you know get up in the morning you forgot to uh charge it it's not going to charge very fast at all. So you want to charge this kind of device overnight. You also get 15 watt wireless charging, which is good. Fast, 15 watt fast wireless charging, which really is not fast compared to the competition uh, today because 30 watt warp, you know, 30 watt um, wireless charging now, 50 watt wireless charging, 65 watt wireless charge, like wireless charging has gone crazy. Now I know this was, you know two years back but still 15 is just too slow especially again for the price you're paying for this device now of course it came with the snapdragon 855 and and it has android 11 and will receive android 12 and the dual stereo speakers on here are great tuned by akg they sound really good let me play just a t tad bit of music for you Not bad, huh? Now check out the movie experience. So I'm going to tell you right now, you're definitely going to enjoy your media experience on here, whether it's listening to music or watching movies. The, it's, it's great. These speakers are great. And the thing that I like about these speakers is you got a separate speaker on the top and you got one on the bottom. Now, you may say, well, that's not a big deal. Actually, that is a big deal because you're getting equal distribution of sound coming from two separate speakers as opposed to um, coming through the earpiece. You're getting better sound because they're two separate speakers, but they work in concert and they're giving you the same level of loudness as opposed to when it's coming through the earpiece. Now, when it's coming through the earpiece, the bottom speaker is always going to be louder than the earpiece. But when you got a separate speaker at the top, it's going to be the same on both ends. Like my um, Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. See that speaker right there at the top? Speaker right there at the top, speaker at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that because of the case. But this has separate speakers, and these are the best sounding speakers that I have on any of these phones that I have. And this 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 comes in, you know, this is a good set too, but these sound more fuller and just better overall sound. But having separate speakers does make this sound better. I don't know why Samsung doesn't do this. With all their devices, I would say especially their premium devices, give us separate speakers on the top and the bottom. Don't give us sound coming from the earpiece. Do it just like you did this fold because you're going to get better sound overall. All right, so let me get back. Open this bad boy up because this is, like I said, this is where all the goodness is. So you get a 32-bit audio DAC that's tuned by AKG. Sound really good. Not on the level of LG and Xiaomi, but good. Of course, you're getting One UI 3.1, which is the latest uh, One UI. And of course, with One UI, <coughs> excuse me, of course, with One UI, you're getting a OS that's packed with features. And if you're like me and you're all about the features, 
you love One UI because it gives you a ton of features such as edge panels, edge lighting, Samsung Pay with MST, meaning magnetic secure transmission, which means you can use this at any terminal to pay for things, regardless of how old it is, as long as it accepts a credit card or debit card, you can use this device, unlike their newer devices, which they took the MST away. You're getting Samsung Pass, dynamic lock screen and live wallpapers, good lock, smart switch, secure folders, Samsung Dex, Bixby routines, floating notifications, quick music share, screen recording, double tap to wake and sleep the screen. Now that's just some stuff. Now of course it does more even than that. And the thing I like about this too, the performance, this thing is buttery smooth. It doesn't have a high refresh rate, but it doesn't need it. It, do, it really doesn't need it. I mean, it's super fast. It's super smooth. I mean, look, look how fast it's just <laughs> going in and out of these apps. I mean, the phone has no issues at all. I mean, I'm loving this. I love how big the screen is. You see how fast these apps load. I mean, everything loads super, super fast. So performance has been been lovely. It's just been a joy. Very, very smooth. Love that. Of course, the continuation of apps. Now, I love that too. So I'll close this again. Say I uh, turn on the screen. I like that continuation app. So say if I want to get into YouTube, so I'm right there in YouTube. All I do is open it up. It's already unlocked. It takes me right to YouTube. That's a continuation on apps. The same thing. If you close it, still goes right back to where you left off. So I love that continuation of apps from the front to the back and from the back, from the middle to the front. Love that. Now, the cameras, the thing that's good about these cameras, these are the same cameras that you get on the Note 10 Plus. So you know they're high quality and they're flagship cameras. You're getting all 12 megapixel main, 12 megapixel telephoto, and 12 megapixel ultra wide. But you're also getting two times optical zoom, getting great video and photo quality out of these cameras. You open up the inside, you got three cameras on the back, you got two cameras in the um in the inside and you got a camera on the front. So you got six cameras. Six. And they all shoot at 4K at 60 frames per second. That's awesome. So I'm telling you right now, the photo and video quality with this device is excellent. Now, the only things that are missing for me with this device was no IP rating, no headphone jack, no expandable storage, no iris sensor, no IR blaster, and no super fast wired or wireless charging. Other than that, this is a great device. Like I said, it feels so solid. The hinge was made extremely well. It feels so premium. It feels so comfortable. Like you may not even want to use a case on this. Now I'm going to put one on it just in case because drops happen. Things happen. You drop things. I mean, it happens. The thing I like about this too, the phone is nice and small and compact. So if you want to put it in your pocket, it ain't going to take up much space in your pocket as opposed to something like the Note 10 Plus, which is a lot bigger, but you know, it's, it's still slim, but it's still a whole lot bigger. So you're going to have, if you want something really compact, this is going to be the phone for you. But then when you want to, you open it up and now you got this big screen in here, which you can do, you know, whatever you want, especially enjoying media. You're going to, you're definitely going to enjoy your media experience with this device. You're definitely going to enjoy it. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is where all the magic happens, but you have the option. Do I want to keep it small or do I want to go big? And also, the thing that makes this cool, hold on a second. When you can multitask. Now, that's the thing I like a lot. Well, see, you got your edge panels right here. But when you want to multitask, say if I want to go YouTube, put that there. Let me see if I remember how to do this. Now I can open up Facebook. Man, not Facebook, Instagram. Sorry about that, y'all. All right, say I want to do the weather. Now look at this. 
I got an app on the on top and on the bottom. And also, I got one in the middle here that I could move around. I could resize it. I could even open up more. I could just, like, if I don't want to use this right now, I'll just, all I got to do is just make it. Well, I could, I could definitely make it where it's transparent. Hold on a second. Because I don't use it that often. Let me see. Or I could go big with it. Or I could just get rid of it all together. So I know it's another way where you can have something open on the side here. You can open up three more, two more apps on this side. It has a lot of functionality. Multitasking is nice. I don't know how many people is going to actually do that. But for those of you that like to multitask, you'll be able to do it. You'll definitely enjoy it. But the thing I like about most about this is the display. It's so beautiful. Now, like I said, there was a way that Samsung had where you could eliminate that. Just bring you lose a little bit of screen real estate by um, turning that black and evening it out with the notch. But when I watch movies, there's a way you could do it. I had to do it through good luck. Let me show you real quick. So I went down to, let me see. I believe it was the task changer. I think it was, hold on a second. Sorry, multi, I think it was multi, multi star. Okay, so see down here at the bottom, it says the app size stretch to camera hole. So I press that and see what it says at the top here, the app size stretch to camera hole. I got it set for all the apps. So when I, you know, go into anything, YouTube or anything, you're not, it's going to be evenly across. See how it's just going to go straight across. You're not going to see that notch. The only place that you can't get rid of that notch is the front screen. Now, hopefully they'll come out with something where you can. But right now, on the home screen, you're going to see it unless you use um, some kind of wallpaper that's really black and you won't be able to see it. But other than that, it could hide it in all the other apps if you choose to. And also, you can use swipe gestures. You can get rid of this. You can also center this. You can have it here in the middle or on the left. You could do that with good luck. So there's a lot of things you could do to change this. But it's, like I said, this is a really good device. It feels really good. It's not super fragile you don't want to press hard on the inside screen you just want to just do like that just close it up and you're done with it love this feels really good substantial do i think you should pick it up if you're into foldables and you like that type of cutting edge cutting edge technology i would say definitely go for this especially because it's so much less than it was like if you can get it for under 700 or just a little over 700 I would grab it, especially, but you want to get it in mint condition. You know, you don't want to get a, you know, you want something like when you go on eBay, you want to read carefully the description because you want to make sure that the screen is in mint condition. You want, you don't want any issues with the um, display at all, whether in the front, especially on the inside. So make sure you read the description. And I guess, like I said, if you can get it for uh, really cheap, I would go for it because remember it was two grand when it was released back in 2019. But like me, I'm patient. I like to wait till things go way, way down and then I'll grab it. If I want it, you could do the same. If you exercise patience, I don't think nobody should be going out there paying two grand for a device unless you're trading in something for it and you can get it for a whole lot less Then that's different. But if you don't have nothing to trade, I would just wait for that price to drop because they always drop. This is, this is the reason why I would say never pay full price for expensive flagship device because that price is always going to drop eventually. You may have to wait a little while, but that price is always going to drop. So never pay full price, ever. <laughs> I made that mistake many times, never do it again. So should you pick up this device in 2021? Is it worth it? I say yes, absolutely. You're getting great build quality. You're getting great specs. You're getting great cameras. You're getting a great display. You're getting great battery life. And to me, that's that's like the foundation for a great device. And you're getting great performance. So with all of that, yes. And it's going to continue to get at least two more years of security updates. And it's going to get Android 12 as well. So 
Thank you for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it. Please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And please hit that notification bell so you'll get alerted every time I upload a new video. Thank you very much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Hope you guys stay safe out there. And I'll check you guys out in the next one. Peace.